uh, one of the constant subtle de-emphasized things within the church is our own sinfulness and our own depravity. We tend not to want to talk about that because, again, we want to say peace, peace. We want you to feel good about your life. And so preachers tend not to want to say you're sinful, you're depraved, you're, you're, you're what Jesus says about you in Revelation 3. Wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. You have nothing. And if we ever get to build a building, that's what's going on the front of the auditorium as you walk in. You are poor, wretched, pitiable, blind, and naked. Welcome to Village Church, right? Right? Because it's only by understanding that about yourself that the cross looks beautiful. I listen to people, and they'll they'll preach and teach all day about Jesus as a great example. Be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. I'm not sure at the end of their teaching, though, why I needed him to come and die for me because he's not a savior. He's just an example because there's nothing wrong with me. I haven't been told that. But there is something wrong with you. This is why one writer has said it this way. False prophets talk much about the love of God, but nothing of his holiness. Much about people who are deprived, but nothing about those who are depraved. Much about God's universal fatherhood of every human being, but nothing about his unique fatherhood only of those who are his children through faith in his son. Much about what God will give to us, but nothing about obedience to him. Much about health and happiness, but nothing about holiness and sacrifice. Their message is a message of gaps, the greatest gap of which leaves out the truth that saves. The truth that saves. You're never going to get saved unless you believe that something is wrong with you, that you were born into original sin. Another theology that modern thinkers have thrown to the side and said, no, we're, we're all born good. We just need a little tweak, right? We're all going to, you know, this is what our kindergarten teachers told us. This is what our parents told us growing up. Don't worry, kids, you're all good. The Bible comes in and says, there's no one who does good. There is no one who is righteous. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You are in this state of need, which is why he needed to come and save you and die a brutal, awful death. The worst of which was not the physical part. It was the spiritual part of what was actually happening emotionally when the father was denying him and piling up on him all of your sin because you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. If you start there, then you begin to see your need for a savior.